circumference. Oh, math isn't my thing. <laughs> In today's video, I'll show you how to mix and pour cement for a stepping stone. It's perfect for mosaics or whatever you want to do with it. You ready to get your hands dirty? Let's get to it. Welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Julie. And on this channel, we discuss tips, tricks, tools, adhesives, materials, and specific mosaic projects, all to shorten your learning curve when it comes to creating mosaic art. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing. I know that working with cement can seem a bit intimidating, but in small doses like what we're gonna do today, it's actually quite easy and doable. There are a couple reasons why I wanted to tackle today's video topic. For one, I'm gonna be making a mosaic stepping stone in a future video, and I'll link it here. Only I need it to be round to match the existing stepping stone already in my garden. The problem? I couldn't find a round stepping stone already made in my area. Another reason for today's video is that by learning how to mix and pour cement, it opens up a whole new world as far as the type of stepping stone you would like to create and the shape. All you need is a mold. Lucky for you, there are plenty of them out there or you can create your own with lumber. I'll include a list with links for the materials down below in the description in case you'd like to pour a stepping stone of your own. There are advantages and disadvantages of pouring your own stepping stone, and we'll quickly go over them. However, I think you'll see that the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages. But let's start with the advantages because like I said, they far outweigh the disadvantages. Good news always before bad news? I don't know. The first advantage is that by pouring your own stepping stone, you can decide what shape and thickness you want the stepping stone to be. From a simple round stepping stone like the one today, or this butterfly stepping stone that I made a few years ago. The second advantage is that you can color your cement to whatever color you want. And there are a wide range of colors. This is especially helpful if your cement is going to be exposed like my stained glass butterfly. A third advantage, and this is for those who are going to mosaic on their stepping stone, pouring your own stepping stone allows you to choose what style of mosaic stepping stone you want to have. Are you gonna tile on top of your cement stepping stone? Are you going to put your design inside the mold first and then pour the cement on top of it? Or are you going to embed your tile pieces into the freshly poured cement? You have options. Now for the disadvantages. Wah, wah, wah. They really aren't that bad. It will cost you more to pour your own stepping stone. You'll need to buy the cement, the mold, the gloves, etc., plus your labor. All of this can add up to more than you would spend on just getting a stepping stone at your local store or nursery center. However, one bright spot in this is that you would own the mold and could make more. Another disadvantage is that once you pour your stepping stone, it has got to sit for a while. It goes through a curing process, and even though you can get it out of the mold within a few days, it then needs to sit and fully cure for another 28 days. So this is not a project where you can pour your mold, tile or paint or put it outside for quite a while. So this is a project where you've got to plan ahead. But like I said, I think the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages as long as you plan ahead. So let's get started. I'm working with cement today, which is incredibly drying to the hands, just as thin set and grout are. So I'm going to be wearing gloves. Before I start anything, I wanna make sure that my work surface is level. So I'm going to be working here on my work table and once I've filled my stepping stone mold with cement, it's going to sit here for the initial curing process, which is about three to five days. So if you're not in that situation, you may wanna start off by putting your empty mold on top of a board. You can fill it 
And then when you're done and you need to move it somewhere else, somewhere safe for the curing, you've got it on a board and you can pick it up and you can move it to a secure area for the final curing process. Before I mix up the cement, I'm gonna spread a releasing agent all over the inside of the mold. Now I'm using petroleum jelly, but you can also use vegetable oil or cooking spray. It's real easy. It's kind of like when you grease the inside of a cake pan. I'm using a paper towel and I'll just spread the petroleum jelly all over the sides and bottom of the mold, making sure I hit every surface and spot that will come in contact with the cement. Now I'm ready to mix up the cement. But before you start measuring out, you'll want to mix up your cement while it's still in the original bag. And that's just to make sure that you get an even mix of sand and concrete in every scoop. You'll want to follow your manufacturer's instructions to the letter. The cement I'm using has a handy guide on the side of the box, which tells me how much dry mix and water I need for a 12 inch round stepping stone. It's pretty handy since the cement and mold are coming from the same manufacturer. It also gives specific measurements on colorants if I wanted to color my cement. So this guide says that I need 12 cups of cement and 28 ounces of water. I've got a bucket and a trowel for mixing, so I'm ready. You should always wear a dust mask and protective eyewear when mixing cement, grout, or thin set. So I'm going to start by pouring a little bit of water into my bucket and I'll slowly add some of the dry mix and I'll stir. Then I'll add a little more water and cement, then stir. And I'll keep doing this process until everything gets mixed thoroughly and it gets to the consistency of pancake batter. This looks good. Although the manufacturer's instructions said that reinforcements aren't necessary, I did go ahead and cut out some metal mesh so that you can see how to do it in case the cement you're using suggests it. I made sure that it fit and so that it didn't touch the edge. Sometimes before cement is poured, you may see in construction that there's some metal and they pour the cement over that, it's rebar. And this sort of acts as that same thing. It just reinforces the concrete and makes it even stronger. I'll pour a layer of cement into the mold, about half of my bucket making sure it gets all over and is somewhat level. Next, I'll add the piece of metal mesh on top of the cement, making sure it's just slightly wedged into place. I also wanna make sure that it's in the center of my mold. Then I'm gonna pour the remainder of my cement on top of it. I'm gonna smooth it out and spread it around. This looks good. With a hammer or you can use a mallet, I'm gonna gently tap around the sides for a couple minutes just to get any air bubbles out. Before 
curing is to cover the stepping stone with plastic. Not only does this keep the surface area clean, but it also prevents cracks during the curing process by trapping water inside, which regulates the cement's temperature and ensures gradual curing. Ideally, you should keep the cement covered for a minimum of three to five days, but if you can keep it covered for longer, then even better. So now that our cement is poured, you're gonna to wanna to clean your tools immediately because cement can damage and ruin them. Okay, it's been five days and I'll check to see if there's any heat radiating from the surface. There isn't, so it's ready to be removed from the stepping stone. You should gently pull the mold away from the dry cement. Do this all the way around your stepping stone. Okay, once you've done that, get a hold of it and gently turn it upside down onto the table and it should pop out. This looks great. It takes a while for cement to fully cure, so it's advisable that you leave it indoors for at least 28 days before you seal it, paint it, mosaic it, or move it outdoors. And that's it. I can't wait to see this stepping stone with a mosaic design. And remember, there's a complete list of materials down below in the description so you can make your own stepping stone. Question of the day, let me know in the comments if you've poured a cement stepping stone. I'd love to hear. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up as it really does help my channel. And subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell notification so you never miss a single upload and let me know in the comments if there's something you'd like me to cover in a future video. I'll see you soon. Bye. If somebody's doing a beer drinking contest and every time I say stepping stone, they take a drink, they're gonna be drunk by the end of this video. <laughs> oh my goodness. Circumference? Oh, math isn't my thing. <laughs> If you're looking for more mosaic inspiration, you can check out one of these two videos. Until then, see ya.